Omisha Foundation is running a particular movement called the Voice of the New Generation Movement. The goal of this movement is to accelerate sustainability practices in the world. And our mission is to inspire and motivate this new generation to develop a deeper understanding of the global social issues and for them to become advocates and for them to influence the attitudes and behavior of the society to be able to accelerate sustainability in the world. But we are particularly uh, fostering three communities. So one of the communities is in climate crisis, uh, the other is in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the third one actually is combination of all the other sustainabilities combined. We call that the all SDGs community. So uh, uh, Mitra is Delhi's first community-based organization, and we started in year 2005. Of course, one of the bigger ideas at that point time was to have a safer place for you know different identities even those organizations who existed were having very limited spaces trans people to run the organization we were doing more of hiv intervention work so all these years we have been working around health but of course we use this money for health around other things whereas you know crisis management may be gender-based violence when we started in 2005 there was 377 you know in the penal code 377 which used to criminalize certain things and transgender were not part of Indian election or any any of these schemes, let's say. But very recent after the Nalsa judgment, so our work is not only about the health now, but it is more to give community equal opportunity where they don't have to beg just because they have been, you know, shut out, there no work spaces and everything. When we really say of inclusion, I, we really mean that in real, I mean, it should not be tokenism. You mentioned diversity, inclusion and equity. Do you think in some ways, even though we've come past being discriminatory, we still lack that intercultural communication. We are still not comfortable with other groups of people who are different in ethnicity, race, religion, or just like their overall background. It's a very interesting question. Um, you know, and my understanding has also evolved on this over the years. And I've begun to understand that uh, communication uh, is a lot about intention. So this, this whole issue about intercultural communication actually gets bridged uh, beyond the verbal communication. So we work a lot also with, for example, women from different uh, ethnic backgrounds and empowering them to become better entrepreneurs. So when students are talking to women and when students are talking to students, there are lots of times that uh, there are gaps in their ethnicities and backgrounds, and there is a huge possibility of there to be a lot of difference in understanding and miscommunication and misunderstanding. So I've seen in a lot of cases when students come from these different backgrounds, there is an innate trust. There's an innate understanding that they all mean well, and they are able to actually bridge that uh, cultural gap much faster than when it begins to happen with uh, these women from different backgrounds, because it starts from uh, a certain mistrust, may I say that? And it takes a lot longer uh, to bridge that gap. And that's where the intercultural uh, gaps that begin to emerge cause challenges. But once they have that trust that they mean well, and they are here to help them, then uh, you know the inter intercultural gaps also begin to get bridged much faster, despite the backgrounds. Since I'm studying media, I would love to know your perspective on the media representation of your community? What do you think about it? See, uh, as for my understanding, of course, British did this big damage to community, tribal communities, different indigenous communities, transgender communities. Of course, there is one thing which happened in the past, of course, and which continued for some time. But I think this entertainment industry, especially in India, I think half of the people, not even half of the people, I think majority of people get there any form of education, you know, any form of communication from all these platforms. We all do have evidence that how badly the cinema and the television soaps and any portrayal of an LGBT person, especially trans person, is so misrepresented. They have been shown as a, you know, child molester, kidnappers, murderers, all ugly things. What in general we face today is learning from all these spaces. Because we never talked about, you know, transgender people, there were no resources which can actually tell the right thing. But whereas, you know, this dominating industry was absolutely doing opposite of it, a big damage in misrepresentation of the community. So, so representation is, of course, 
for uh, the whole diversity is not as much as it can be, needs to be. Uh, but you know, as and how there is a better understanding in the media of those cultures, that nuanced understanding begins to happen, and the representation also becomes more real. Otherwise, it's all stereotyped. And I think this concludes it. Thank you so much for taking the time out. It was great hearing your insights. Thank you so very much. All the best to you, Nandini. Same here, and best of luck.